Good morning, friends. This is Dennis Miracle. Today I'm going to be making a quilt block number four in the 8x8 size. Um, and so I have already run the first step. I'm using a silver, light silver uh, thread. So unfortunately you can't, I can barely see it myself. So it's really difficult to see. Uh, but uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I've run step one, I'm going to run step two, but before I do that, I'm going to place down my batting and uh, for an 8 by 8 uh, uh, design, I recommend uh, either 9.5 by 9.5 or 10 by 10 uh, block, uh, square block. So if you're making a 6 by 6 block, I would suggest a 7.5 or 8 inch square block of uh, batting but uh, anyhow let me place this uh, down and run step two and I'll be right back all right you can see that I have uh, run the step number two which just sewed down the uh, batting I sure was either cut it crooked or got it in there crooked but it's it's okay that uh, doesn't really matter as, as long as it's sewed down on all sides that's all that matters uh, and now I'm going to run step three which is a placement lines for all of the uh, different little pieces of uh, the pattern that we're going to use so let me do that and I'll be right back all right as you can see I've run the uh, outlines for all the various pieces and uh, now we can look over on our screen and see where the first piece is that we need to place down. So you can see it is this top left hand piece, which is generally the way all of my designs start from left to right, like reading a book. Uh, so let me find a piece of fabric that will just fit that and uh, I'll be right back. Alrighty, I've selected this piece of fabric here, and uh, number one, I would say always to press your fabric, but unfortunately, I'm not uh, at my regular sewing area, and so that's not uh, going to be easy for me to do today, and I've got a bad leg, and so getting up and down is just not in the plans today to do this 20 times but I would always say and I always do when I can I always take my fabric and press it so what, what you want to do is this is where we're going to go right here go and make sure your fabric covers all sides so it's covered by plenty and make sure that you are at least a half inch over the exterior uh, sewing lines. You see the lines there, and you can tell that I'm way over, at least a half inch over. So that's what I would uh, tell you to do on every one of these that has an external uh, point touching the exterior of the uh, design. The only thing that doesn't is this piece in the center here where we're gonna trim all the way around but uh, all these other pieces do touch the outside of the uh, the perimeter of the design so anyhow let me stick this in here and sew it down and by the way i've changed colors to black and also uh, i use pre-wound white bobbins but i've placed I've, i run a black bobbin and put it in the uh, bobbin so because that's just the one color that always comes through and i see it on i see white on the top if i have a black uh if I have a black uh, thread in the top, I always see white bobbin coming through. So anyhow, that's what we've got. So let me go ahead and sew this down and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, that's sewed down and I'm going to take and do the trimming. I got a little bunching up right here in the corner. This, uh, this is not the batting that I would choose, but it's all I had. It's a little too fluffy. Uh, the loft. It's, a, I think, a high loft batting, and I like something that's more fl flatter, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. So, uh, let me 
go ahead and cut this. Now let me show you. I'm going to use my uh, good sharp scissors and I'm going to come in from the side straight across and cut as close as I can without cutting into the stitches and then I'm going to go right like this and right off the side leaving this area here. We don't want to touch this area. We want it to be over here because it needs to be caught up in the seam in the final uh, few steps. So let that be. Uh, anyhow, uh, let me trim that and I'll be right back. All right, you can see where I've trimmed it on the sides here that are internal and left this out here uh, where it's in the outside the stitch line. Now let's look over at our machine and see where we're going next. All right, we're going to do this little tiny piece up at the very top. So let me, uh, which is this area here, let me grab a, something that will fit that and I'll go ahead and uh, place it and uh, sew it down and uh, then I'll come back. All right, here's what I chose and I'm going to come in from the side over here and cut straight down and then cut along the this all the way over here and then cut straight off. So let me do that and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. All right, that's what I've done with the second piece, leaving all this extra part over here in the, uh, I call, I'm calling this area here around the sides, the margin. That's just my own term. I'm sure you'll see that nowhere else, but this ex part outside the design on the uh, here on the sides i'm going to call the margin so you see there's plenty left in the margin plenty of fabric so let's look over at our next uh step and see what we're doing now all right we're going to uh, do that center piece so let me find a little scrap of material to cover that and we'll do that i'll be right back all right, I've got this piece of fabric that actually it looks like, let me show it to you. I've just got these scraps, but it looks like patchwork. It was really neat looking fabric. It looks like denim patchwork, but I can't get it anymore. I can't remember who the manufacturer was, but uh, anyhow, I'm placing that here in the center and let me uh, sew it down and I'll trim it and I'll be right back. All right, and as I said, I trimmed all the way around, and uh, since it's the only interior piece, now let's look and see where we're next going. All right, we're next going in that upper corner, so let me find something for that, and I'll place it down and sew it, and I'll be back in a moment. All righty, you can see that I have left a large piece over here in the margin, and also up here at the top, uh, and it kind of, it's splits off and comes down like this and leaves the exterior stitch line so I cut it along that way and down and such so there's one more piece down so let's look and see where we're going next all right you see where we're going next we're going to this piece over here so let me which is right there let me find a piece for it and I'll sew it down all right, you can see that I cut around these exterior edges, trimmed it nice, and then left this large piece over here in the margin. So that's exactly what you should be doing. Now let's see where we go next. All right, we go to that piece over right here. So let me do the same procedure and I'll be right back. All right, here is the piece I chose and you see I've left the large overhang in the margin and cut it down everywhere else so that's what it should look like so let's look and see where we go next all right we go to the bottom right hand corner so we're going here so let me find a piece of fabric for that and sew it down and i'll show you how that looks all righty there is the next block and i've cut it and left a good size of pieces here in the margin and uh, that's what that should look like. And so now let's look and see where we're going. All right, we're going to the, the bottom left. So we're going to this piece right here. So let me find something to go there. And I was just thinking, I think the reason this appeals to me is it reminds me of my grandma when I was a child in the 1960s. I'd sometimes sit with her and she'd be doing her quilting. She was probably 75 years old then. 
and she would, of course, there was no going to the fabric store. There was using whatever you had on hand. There was, uh, you know, old shirts and such, and uh, I'd rummage around in her bag of scraps, and hers were all uh, the hexagonal, hex hexagonal, I think is how you say it. She, that's what she uh, made quilts, uh, those hexagons, and uh, I think this kind of reminds me of being with her and uh, because you just use what you had, you didn't run off and spend $12 a yard for fabric and then, uh, you know, then uh, use the scraps of that. So anyhow, let me continue. All right, my uh, camera stopped, so I had to go uh, deal with uh, it. So this is a piece I chose. I hope this is where we left off and you could see I cut it leaving this uh, part in the margin and trimmed it all the way around and it looks like I need to do some more trimming right up here so uh, let's look and see where we're going next all right we're going next to this one of the last two pieces right here so let me find something to go with it and I'll be right back okay you can see here uh, why well, I have selected and I've left a big part here in the margin and uh, uh, I did not watch and I was careless and I got too close this was I did not pull this tan piece over far enough so there's a little area here that's not covered but I'm going to do a satin stitch at the very end and I th believe that will cover that and take care of that so it's just uh, it seems like I make a mistake on every one of these but oh well we go on can't waste any time thinking about that so let me uh, find the last piece here and I'll be back in a moment. All right, I attached that last piece and this is what we have now. I did take it over uh, and uh, press it and because uh, I, I just love having things pressed and like I say, my foot's hurting me today and I just couldn't bear to get up all these times and do this pressing, but uh, it looks good now. I'm happy with it. And so I'm going to start, and the next seg segments will be the uh, pretty quilting, not the quilting, the stitching, the, the crazy quilt stitches on the seams. And so they're each in a separate uh, step, and I'm going to run each step one after another. And when I'm done running all those, I will be right, I'll be back. All right, here's what all the pretty stitching looks like. And I love it I think it's so neat uh, and the next steps uh, which I'll run all at the same time is uh, and each of these quilting was in a each of this stitching was in a uh, separate step so you can choose which ones if you don't like all of them or you don't want to put all of them in it's up to you uh, so the, the next things that are going to occur is the uh, pretty uh, interior quilting of each of these pieces uh, and they'll be first it runs a stitch that a contour stitch that goes around the inside of each piece and then the step after that it does the actual uh, quilting so I put that that way thinking some people may not like the actual uh, surrounding type contour stitch and that way they can determine uh, to leave it out if they want, so uh, I'm not sure that's the best idea, but uh, I may in the future uh, consolidate it and make it one stop, uh, one one step instead of two. But anyhow, for, t for this design, it's in two steps. Each uh, square is uh, pretty quilting. So let me go ahead and start that, and when I'm done with that, I'll be back. Okay. You can see that all of the uh, beautiful quilting has been done. And uh, I had to run this one twice because there was a problem with the thread. That's why it's so dark. Um, and anyhow, what I'm going to do now is run step 45, which will just go around the entire uh, frame of the hoop. The, I mean, the entire uh, frame of the design, basically. and that will be it if you're going to just uh, to use this as a quilt block that will be the end of uh, this session and you will be finished so you would just take it off the uh, 
out of the hoop and uh, trim the sides to whatever you are going to uh, trim them to. But I'm going to go ahead and make this a uh, mug rug. So anyhow, let me run step 45 and I'll be right back. All right, I have run the step that uh, put uh, a line of stitching all the way around and basically tack down all these little pieces of uh, the overhang and uh, that's what that uh, step was meant to do so it, like I said if you're using this as a quilt block then you're finished you take this out of here and you uh, take off the uh, uh, you know the stabilizer and you would cut it to whatever trim it to whatever size you uh, need uh, allowing for whatever uh, seam you're going to, you know, whether quarter inch or half inch, but I'm, I'm not a quilter, so uh, that's my understanding of what you would do. I'm sure that you, all of you are probably much more uh, experienced in quilting than I am, which is zero. So that's all I can offer as far as quilting, but I'm going on and make a mug rug. So what I'm going to do is get a piece of fabric that uh, uh, we'll go on the back and I will turn the hoop over and I will uh, cut, I'm going to cut a 10 by 10 piece of fabric probably and I'm going to put it face up here on the back covering the design on the back face up and I'm going to tape it down on all four sides and that's our next step. That'll be step number 46. So let me do that and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, well, I thought this is pretty batik is all I could find handy. So it's on the back side and it's really beautiful. Anyhow, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to use this. So I have taped it all down and uh, made sure it covered the entire uh, design. So let me put that in the machine. And it, what the machine is going to do now is run a, a uh, wide zigzag uh, uh, around the entire perimeter of the design like the prior uh, like the prior step did only this is uh, going to be a zigzag so let me do that and I'll be right back all right as you can probably see the zigzag has been run along and so now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, a, our scissors and we're going to trim the bat they cut the top fabric the cotton fabric right down to the right up to the point of the stitches of the zigzag stitches we're going to trim the batting the same way and we're going to turn it over to the back and we're going to trim the uh, beautiful backing the same way right up to the zigzag stitches so this will take a moment and I'll be back in a, in a bit Okay, I have trimmed the cotton fabric. Now I'm going to trim the batting. All right, I have trimmed the batting. And now I'm going to turn it over and trim the, the backing. So let me do that. Okay, I have now trimmed the back side and I'm going to try to get these little black pieces of thread out of here before I do the uh, next step the next step which is the last step we'll do a, uh, a satin stitch all around the exterior uh, and i have found from experience that i like to run it twice because i like a nice thick i don't want anything showing through so that's probably what i'm gonna do is run it twice around but anyhow let me uh, do a little more trimming here to get rid of these strings because they will show through and then I'm going to run the last step which is step 47 and I'll be back in a moment all right I ran the uh, satin stitch twice around and she is done and let's see what the back looks like very nice very nice very pleased so that is the end of uh, I'm going to take it out of the hoop. I'm going to uh, probably, I'm going to pull off the uh, my paper towel stabilizer and probably take my uh, scissors and might have to do a few little snips here and there to uh, make everything look good. But uh, I'm very pleased with it. And I think if it were put in a quilt uh, without running the satin stitch, obviously, 
uh, it would be a beautiful quilt. I love the black. Finally, I can see the stitches. I think I'm going to use black from now on for my uh, quilting stitches. It just looks really pretty to me and makes everything uh, show up. So anyhow, I thank you for watching uh, this, uh, watching me make this, and uh, I hope if you obtain the uh, pattern, you will make something simple like this, a, uh, a mug rug, uh, or uh, you'll make a quilt with enough pieces uh, put together, enough blocks. And I just want to thank those who continue to support me and encourage me. It means so much. And uh, anyhow, thank you again. And I've, I've got about eight or nine of these already made, ready to be put out. So I'll uh, see you in the next day or two. Bye-bye.